The most important plant in my garden, the most beneficial plant for wildlife in my garden, if I could choose one, is ivy. Which ivy? We have the best for the main here beside us, as you know yourself. I suppose it is two, three hundred years old. And I've listened to people talk about the ivy, and it says they suck out all the sustenance out of the trees and out of the walls, and that. If that was true, and to the day the experts have to be questioned. Many times ordinary people with ordinary common sense in many cases can surpass the experts. And the thing with it, if what the experts are telling us about the ivy was true, <coughs> and these tall walls in the domain have been gone years of time, 100 or 200 years ago, the great oak trees and the other trees would be all gone as well. And the thing with it, I myself, you can't prove things for yourself. I myself, a, a, a small bit of woodland, and when Pat, my late wife, was alive, we never touched the ivy. Mm. And the thing with it, my biggest trees are embraced and embellished by ivy. Now that's what I'd say about the ivy. With the Weed killer is another thing. I believe, I throughout you, not in Ireland, all the county councils, if I have always represent the bodies in other countries, or they call the county councils, should simply stop using weed killer. There's no need It's for going it. to happen. Within a few years, they will be banned in Ireland. It's going to happen. Uh, because we're always a bit slow to the party. Yes. It's already happened in Europe, it's going to happen in other countries in Europe, it's going to happen. And it's just a question of do we embrace, I think all these things, let's embrace and do them now, get them quick, get on them. But the way human well, nature is, it takes well, time. It could be wonderful, Colin, to, to, to hear that. Well, as well with our, our class and our lords and that. You see, the insects we have only discovered, I say, within the last five years or so, how utterly vital our insects are. Not alone the bees, wasps, moths, and different things, but the, the worms, and so many little beings are now utterly vital to the human existence. And the, the thing with it, uh, as well, if, if people want to move, Especially on to prepare, especially to carpet mowing or, or class and that. Can we not hold on to the poor pollinators? I'd say they come out in thousands and die in thousands in the early part of the year. They come out and the dandelion, which is a vital flower, flower all put down to type of robotic business and they cut down instead of having compassion a bit of tenderness and sensitivity for these little creatures and for the horses. I know. And hold back the boy or boy. No, you're right. And I think that. things are not really done maliciously. I think a lot of things are just done because people just don't think about it. They just don't think. A bit, and I can remember as a kid, I think when I went around spring weed killer. I wasn't just thinking about it. Never thought it was doing a bad thing. Never really thought about it. But now the message is getting out, and for councillors now know if they're doing a bad thing. I mean, now it's now there's not much of an excuse anymore. Certainly, if a contractor is out doing something, there should be people around to kind of go. But it's up to everybody. I've stopped them around here before. I said, "Sad, it's, it's August. You're not supposed to be cutting." You know, I've had a few choice words. Well, but you know, if, if, if people get, and it started to happen. I was out in Carahulli about three years ago, and uh, a couple of cars arrived up with trailers and dogs in the back of it. Dogs jumped out. A couple of lads with guns, and they were going fox hunting. And around Westport, 30 years ago, a couple of your guns, a couple of your dogs wandered across the countryside, they would have made a blind bit of notice. All the neighbours came out and stopped them. Yes. And so this is it's just a change in attitude, a change in attitude that we can, and it's, and it's happening and it's beginning. And, and the young people, it's a double-edged sword. There's a sort of disinterest at one level, but the respect at another level too. They sort of know that we have to look after things. They don't really know how to do it, but they know that we should and accept the fact that we have to now give nature a chance. Oh, I agree with you.
Colin that <coughs> the lot of big kids and malicious kids sort of we got so used to doing the things that we we find awful hard to to control from it. Yeah. But I, I suppose at this now I was often passing back passing back a few years ago and the cows were just starting to make their nests. And there were two or three cows with little kittens in their beaks and at the root tree at the back of the Catholic Church. I find to what they are the root of big machines that can go up into the air and push a full point. They were the machines starting to take the heads of the trees where the poor cows into a little child of five years they say, look, look, please not see the cows at both ways watching the build their nest. But we need a sensitivity and feeling as well for the yes. creatures. And, 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 yeah. as, as well as well for them. And even trees many times now can be unnecessarily cut down or unnecessarily chopped and hedged. And hedgehogs and this the amount of hedgehogs that's destroyed unnecessarily. Uh, well, it's family. unnecessary. Honestly. It's so much of it. And, and Colin, the one yeah. that's left there, what they has got into us, we might put them about behind the table. And as that who is that, imagine a poor boy can't roost by night or be for this. Can we not let it be a flahool of this in our hedges? <laughs> and give a bit of decency a flahool of Let the hedges have it. They go a little bit. And I mean, but they will, thank God, be changed, and people will, as you say, have gone on. Thank you very much. your time.